so much to uh, talk about. Man. I mean, it is election season. So 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 I get that. Uh, but there is a major problem with mainstream media in this country. We've got to talk about the Trump town hall, the Trump rally on CNN. CNN is making a move. CNN is taking a turn. We might as well now call them the conservative news network because that's the direction that they're going in. Fox News lost some viewers. So CNN thinks that they can grab some of the viewers that Fox News has lost. There was a Republican presidential town hall, if that's what you want to call it. Town hall filled with Trump supporters. Right? That's what we saw. CNN, uh, it, it is it, it is a lot. It, it, it is a lot. There were a lot of disturbing comments made that CNN sat by and allowed to happen. It it is it is it is sad because we've seen this movie before. E. Jean Carroll, who just the day before this debacle on CNN, had just won a case against Donald Trump. How can you look at this candidate? I can't even believe that we're calling him a candidate. I can't even believe he's a candidate. And support him. It's a very disturbing town hall that we saw. Very disturbing. So E. Jean Carroll may sue Trump a third time after the vile comments made on CNN. So Caitlin Collins was the moderator, the host. I think you needed another person in addition to Caitlin Collins. Two regular Washington media folks are not going to be able to pin him down. Have folks not been paying attention to what we have been seeing? He did this in 2015, 2016. He's done this already. The normal traditional rules do not apply with this candidate because he's not a normal traditional candidate. He's not going to do things the way that you expect. He has no decency. None. Zero. Yet CNN, I guess they're trying to go after the fair and balanced moniker now. CNN did a town hall with Donald Trump. And it was a disaster. It was a disaster for Trump. He said some things that are going to be used against him. Now, he is the Republicans' de facto nominee. Y'all problem. He dug into his 2020 lies. He dodged on abortion. The Republican audience cheered. And y'all got mad when Hillary said the Trump supporters were deplorable. But here's the thing. The Republicans cheered, but so did Democrats seeking the 2024 fodder. No surprise here. Donald Trump is still Donald Trump. So for over one hour, I guess about 70 minutes. He was on stage in New Hampshire. And this serves as a a very clear reminder that the former president has only one speed. This time around is just like the first time around. He has evil charisma. He's entertaining, but the things that he says are disgusting. 
So whether he's in office, whether he's out of office, Donald Trump has remained the center of gravity in American politics. So if you ask me if I'm nervous about this rematch between Donald Trump and Joe Biden, the answer is yes. Yes, I'm nervous. I'm nervous for many reasons. It's not like Joe Biden is this pillar of strength and we're not worried. I'm worried every day that something could happen to Joe Biden, just natural. I'm worried that Kamala Harris is not popular enough, is not politically strong enough at this moment to beat Donald Trump. I don't know if she ever could be because there are other factors at play here. She doesn't have the charisma that Donald Trump has. She doesn't have the clap back. She can't go back and forth real quick like that. And I don't know if this country is even ready for a black woman. They weren't ready for a white woman in that position. So CNN in their infinite wisdom slash stupidity gave Donald Trump an unfiltered primetime platform that reminded you of the 2016 campaign. Caitlin Collins, who many of you may not know this, used to work for Tucker Carlson. Tucker Carlson? One just got fired from Fox. She used to work for him in 2015. So anyway, she tried to interject, tried to cut him off. Well, uh, I mean, I, I guess... I guess you would say she tried to interject, but she wasn't, she was typical mainstream media person. And when a typical mainstream media person tries to interview Trump, you don't always get good results. You don't always get good results. Trump focused on discussing and defending himself. He barely even touched on Biden's record. Everything's about him. I'm sure that the folks in Trump's camp want him to focus on Biden. Yeah, I I, I don't know. Some takeaways from this CNN town hall. CNN, very, very disappointed in their moves. You fire Don Lemon for his comments. And less than a month later, a few weeks later, You have Donald Trump on your airways. The hypocrisy is mind-boggling. The hypocrisy. The day after the man was found liable for sexual battery and defamation, you put him on your airways. Ooh. How smart is that? Trump will not let go of his lies about January 6th or the 2020 election. If viewers were expecting Trump to have moved on from those lies that the election was stolen from him, out the gate, he shows you ain't a damn thing changed. Shout out to Nice and Smooth. Love that album. He also said that he was inclined to pardon many of the rioters who were arrested on January 6th. You remember the attack at the Capitol? What? Nobody remembers that? He also came armed with a list of his own Twitter posts and statements from that day. An idea that was his. I'm sure. He lied about his inaction that day. Caitlin Collins pressed him about what he was doing during the hours of violence. He said that he did not owe Mike Pence, whose life was threatened by the mob, an apology. Did you expect that he would feel that he should give anybody an apology? 
I, I, I'm sure that he doesn't feel that he owes the ex-wives that he cheated on an apology. But as time went on, he wrapped his arms around what took place at the Capitol and incorporated it into his campaign. You've seen him do it time and time again. Wednesday night on CNN was no exception. He called it a beautiful day. A beautiful day. I want to remind folks that embracing the deadly violence of that day, at least for Republicans, it does not even itself seem like a disqualifier. Uh, it, it is it is unbelievable. And the fact is that this guy could end up the president once again. It, it could happen. Depends on the economy. Depends on what's happening at the time. Depends on the health of Joe Biden. All of these things are factors. So the GOP audience just stacked the deck, but it also revealed where the base is. I don't think that anybody, you know, go, went into and, and came out of this CNN town hall feeling any different about Trump than they felt. However you felt going in is how you felt coming out. So from that standpoint, it didn't move the needle. Folks that are investigating Trump, it may have got given them information that they could use. But the audience's regular interruptions on behalf of Trump, Trump were like a a laugh track on a on a comedy, a sitcom or something. But it built momentum for him in the room. It built momentum on screen for the viewing audience at home. It made Caitlin Collins nervous. She it, it stifled her. It shut her down. She repeatedly tried to interrupt him with facts and correctives. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Wait, are you ready? Like, he's a master at this media stuff. He's been playing the mainstream media for years. For years. No matter how vulgar, no matter how profane, no matter how politically incorrect, no matter how disgusting Donald Trump was, the Republican crowd in New Hampshire ate it up. The whole shtick ate it up. He said, I would pardon a large portion of the January 6th rioters. What happened after that? Applause. He mocked the accusations, the very detailed accusations of rape from E. Jean Carroll as made up hanky-panky in a dressing room. Crowd laughs. No matter that the New York jury held him liable for sexual abuse and defamation this week, awarding Miss Carroll $5 million in damages. Called her a whack job. Applause. Laughter. Flip-flopped on using the debt ceiling for leverage because I'm not president. More laughs. Do these people understand that the debt ceiling is a real thing? Stupid people may not. Ignorant people may not, but it is major. It was a very tough night for Caitlin Collins. You're a nasty person, Trump said to her at one point, echoing a line that he used against Hillary Clinton back in 2016. Crowd laughs. Republicans cheered, but so did Democrats looking to the general election. Yes, Biden beat Trump in the past. But does that mean that every subsequent matchup is going to result in a Biden victory? No. No, it does not. It cannot. 
always mean that. Trump defended January 6th as a beautiful day. Hailed the overturning of Roe versus Wade as a great victory. He did not say that he hoped Ukraine won the war. No surprise there against Russia. He talked again about how rich and famous people get their way. Women let you, he said. And he refused to rule out reimposing uh, the, the separation of families at the border. Oh, there were, there, were, there were a lot of takeaways, a lot of takeaways. Trump's answers played well in the hall. But I just it really is, is going to make its way into Democratic messaging in the next 18 months. So Democrats are going to put forth this, do you want to go back to this and, and show the things that he said? And I'm sure that CNN... That, that got their millions of viewers are going to probably have him on again. I, I think that CNN probably thinks that it was good. It was worthy for them. He's newsworthy. They got to cover him. But there's a way that you cover him. And putting Donald Trump on live is not the way to do it. He needed to be taped. They need to be able to shoot down all of his lies individually. Trump aggressively dodged taking a stance on a federal abortion ban. People need to understand this. Trump is perhaps the single Republican most responsible for the Supreme Court decision to overturn Roe versus Wade last year. Why do I say that? He appointed three of the court's justices who powered the majority opinion. He doesn't put those judges on the court. It doesn't happen. Privately, he has blamed abortion abortion politics for the Republican underperformance in the 2022 midterms. Of course, he's not going to take responsibility, only if it's a victory. So you have that. Another takeaway from this town hall He has deepened the legal jeopardy with his own comments on investigations. The most heated exchange between Donald Trump and Caitlin Collins was over the special counsel investigation into his possession of hundreds of presidential records, including more than 300 individual classified documents at his Mar-a-Lago club once he was out of office. It was an area that he walked himself into, and it's probably going to pose the biggest problems for him. He says that I was there and I took what I took and it gets declassified. Trump said, who has maintained despite contradictions from his own former officials that he had standing to automatically declassify documents that left the Oval Office when they went to the president's residence. That's not how the declassification process works, idiot. He's an idiot. And he has been allowed to get away with this foolishness for far too long. I had every right to do it. I didn't make a secret of it. You know the boxes were stationed outside of the White House. People were taking pictures of it, Mr. Trump said, imitating that people were somehow uh, aware. Uh, it, it It is interesting. Somehow people are aware Uh, that presidential material and classified documents were inside of them. They were not aware. But I'm sure that a lot of those statements are going to get interest from the special counsel, Jack Smith. Mr. Smith, 
would not definitely rule out whether he showed classified uh, uh, material to people. Uh, uh, Trump would not rule it out. I'm sure that Jack Smith is going to be interested in that. Investigators have, you know, asked witnesses about this. Trump didn't rule it out. He said, I would have a right to, at another point he declared, I have the right to do whatever I want with them. Not true. He also defended himself for a call that he made with the Georgia Secretary of State in which he said he was trying to find enough votes to win. I didn't ask him to find anything, Trump said. He did. We heard the tape numerous times. There are a few issues that worry the Trump team, I'm sure. This documents investigation is going to be very interesting. So how do you cover a scumbag like Trump? You cover him, right? But you don't give him a platform just to spit out foolishness. You don't. You don't do it. So-called serious media organizations should know better. CNN should know better. Very, very interesting times that we live in. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, TikTok, at the Diamond K Show, of course, on fire-tv.com. I am here weekdays, 6 p.m. You can check us out. Uh, any episodes that you might miss on fire-tv.com, anywhere you get your podcasts. Do this, take a quick break, and we'll be back with more of the show after this. Looking for food that feeds your soul? Hoodfellas Bistro and Catering is your local African-American-owned restaurant offering American cuisine. Located across from the courthouse, we offer daily jury specials to reward civic duty. Enjoy our full-service restaurant and fully stocked bar. Dine-in, pick-up, delivery, and catering. Our themed happy hours feature live music, handcrafted drinks, and weekly specials. Book your private event at HoodfellowsBistroCatering.com. So we've been talking about it, and you're going to hear me mentioning this more and more because we are going to be streaming from this event. Uh, But not only that. This is an indoor-outdoor pre-Memorial Day Adidas party. So break out those shoes, break out the outfits. It goes down at the Patapsco Arena Sunday, May the 28th from 8 p.m. to 2 a.m. Check this out. Two ballrooms, an outside tent. So this is outside, inside, indoor, outdoor. Check out this all-star DJ lineup. DJ Tons, DJ Kenny K., DJ Booby, DJ Scotty B, DJ One Love, DJ Gutta. Oh, I'm not finished yet. DJ Manny, DJ Kiwi, Mr. Incredible, DJ Double L, DJ Hot Toddy, all hosted by April Watts, Ryan DeLion, Big Status. There's free limited food, cash bar. Tickets are only $30. Tables are $300. And you can get those tickets right now. Now, check this out. You've got to have a ticket to get in this event. Let me say that again. This is a ticket-only event. So you got to get those tickets. DTLR, MNK Music Warehouse Security Mall, Silver Star Restaurant, 801 Bonaparte, uh, their cash app at Terry T Productions, Zell 443-953-1966, Terry T Productions, 443-953-1966. This is a ticket-only event. No ticket, no entry, no exceptions. The indoor-outdoor pre-Memorial Day Adidas party at Patapsco Arena Sunday, May the 28th from 8 p.m. to 2 a.m. Now, check this out. This is for grown folks. I understand some of of our young listeners and some of our, uh, you know, Young viewers, this is not the party for you. This is a grown folks party brought to you by Terry T and Sean Marshall, 
the pre-Memorial Day Adidas party. We're going to be streaming live from this event, streaming live at onfire-tv.com. It's going to be a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to it. Get those tickets right now. It's the Diamond K Show. So much going on in the world. You talk about things from the perspective of how it is. DJ Diamond K, sometimes it comes off like you are almost not in support of, but you just accept the way things are and there's no chance of change. Check me out on YouTube. That's the part that I am just like, argh. On FireTV.com. Welcome back. Welcome back. You man, Diamond K in here. Of course, the Diamond K Show on Fire-TV.com. The Republican, George Santos, who has become infamous for lying about his life story, he pleaded not guilty earlier this week to charges that he scammed donors, stole from his campaign, and lied to Congress about being a millionaire, all while cheating to collect unemployment benefits that he did not deserve. Afterwards. He said that he would not drop his reelection bid or the calls for him to resign. The 13 count federal indictment was a reckoning for this web of lies, web of fraud, this scammer, the deceit that prosecutors say overlapped with the New York Republicans uh, public image of a a wealthy businessman, the lies in his biography that began to unravel after he won the election last fall. Santos is 34 years old. He was released on $500,000 bond following his arraignment about five hours after turning himself in to face charges of wire fraud, money laundering, theft of public funds, and making false statements to Congress. He surrendered his passport and could face up to 20 years in prison if convicted. Republicans, this is how you roll? This is who you support? So he talks about defending himself and a whole bunch of other foolishness. Santos said that he planned to return to Washington where the indictment is amplifying doubts about whether... He's able to serve. House Republican leaders are taking a wait and see approach. You know, criminal conduct's nothing that uh, bothers them unless it's a Democrat. Of course, Santos is innocent until proven guilty. But, um, you know, it is it is seriously time for him to step down. Now, if he was a Democrat, oh, just the just the mentioning of wrongdoing would have been enough for them to get him out of office or put pressure on him. Now, I think that Democrats put too much pressure on their uh, politicians when problems arise, and Republicans don't put enough. We need some kind of middle ground. Everyone Everyone wants to see the wheels of justice turn in this case and in other cases like it, we want to, you want to see the wheels of justice turn. No doubt about that. But at the same time, we need, we need to, to have some type of a standard here. Because you got this guy getting away with being accused of all kind of stuff. And Republicans just act like, oh, well, you know. Let's see what happens. Among the allegations, prosecutors say that Santos created a company and then induced supporters to donate to it under the false pretense that the money would be used to support his campaign. No, that's not what happened, though. Instead, they say he used the money for personal expenses, buying designer clothes and paying off credit card, car payments and the such. Santos is also accused of lying about his finances. The congressional disclosure forms and that kind of stuff. Supposedly lied lied on that. 
he did lying to obtain unemployment benefits. While he was making $120,000 as a, a regional director of an investment firm. Oh, this firm that the government said shut down in 2021 over allegations that it was a Ponzi scheme. The indictment seeks to hold Santos accountable for various alleged fraudulent schemes and brazen misrepresentation, the U.S. attorney said. Taken together, the allegations in the indictment charged Santos with relying on repeatedly dis, uh, repeated dishonesty and deception used to ascend to the halls of Congress and, of course, to put money in his pocket. Yeah. Now, if a black man did this, oh, Democrats would be coming down so hard on them. It's coming down so hard. But for some reason, some reason other folks are allowed to get away with this stuff. It is sickening. It it, it is sickening. He should be thrown out of Congress. He should be, you want to talk about lock him up. Hopefully one day accountability will visit George Santos. He was elected to Congress last fall after a campaign built partly on lies. He told people that he was a wealthy Wall Street deal maker with a substantial real estate portfolio who had been a star volleyball player in college, among other things. Of course, it is not against the law to lie to the public. That was the case. The jails would be filled to the brim. In reality, Santos did not work for a big financial firm, did not go to college. Nothing wrong with that, but you ain't got to lie about it, fam. He struggled financially before entering politics. Nothing wrong with that either. He claimed he fueled his run largely with self-made riches earned from brokering deals on expensive toys for wealthy clients. But the indictment alleges those boats were also exaggerated. In a House disclosure form, Santos reportedly said that he made $750,000 a year from a family company, the Devalder Organization. But the charges unsealed on Wednesday alleged that Santos never received that sum, nor the million dollars and the $5 in dividends he listed as coming from the firm. I mean, it, it never ends. It never ends. Feds have uh, separately been looking into complaints about Santos fundraising for a group that purported to help abuse pets. A New Jersey veteran accused Santos of failing to deliver $3,000 he raised to help get his uh, dog needed surgery. 2017, Santos was charged with theft in a uh, Pennsylvania lawsuit for allegedly using thousands of dollars in bogus checks to buy puppies from breeders. That case was dismissed after Santos claimed that his checkbook was stolen and someone else took the dogs. Also in Brazil, he was investigated for allegedly using stolen checks to buy clothes, a case that authorities say they have since reopened. Oh, yes, it... Typical, typical Republican habits to ignore this foolishness, to ignore this kind of stuff. Santos needs to go. Santos is a stain. Santos is a stain in the halls of Congress. Stain. Disgusting. Give me your thoughts in the comment section, of course, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, TikTok, at the Dom McKay Show, of course, DJ Dom and K at gmail.com, DJ Dom and K at gmail.com.
Welcome back. You're listening to the Diamond K Show, of course, on fire-tv.com. A Baltimore County man is seeking to clear his name and receive compensation for what he says is the wrongful conviction uh, in the death, the, the killing of his son. Prosecutors believe he was responsible. Colin Jones was born on Father's Day in 1998. He died just 72 ye- uh, 72 days later. 72 days later. His father, Clarence, Clarence Jones, was convicted of killing him. Jones' attorney said that the case is an American tragedy in two parts. First, the loss of Jones' newborn son. Second, the 18 years that Jones spent in prison following his 1999 conviction for second-degree murder. Investigators and medical experts believed that the child died from shaken baby syndrome, now known as abusive head trauma. Evidence in the case also indicated that the infant had been sick and spent 25% of his young life in the hospital for various infections, including a staph infection and a urinary tract infection. So this case is a, this is a little complicated. So you have a child, sickly, and Jones appealed his case and was released on parole back in 2017. A judge set aside the conviction in 2021 after experts testified that advances in medical guidance and technology showed the symptoms that were considered conventional wisdom for shaken baby syndrome back in 1999 could also be caused by um, sepsis. The symptoms include uh, bleeding, brain swelling. Prosecutors with the Baltimore County State's Attorney's Office said that they were setting aside the conv- setting aside the conviction does not fully exonerate Jones. So an administrative judge heard arguments from both Jones' attorney and prosecutors. Jones and his attorneys said that they're willing or, or waiting until the judge makes a decision before talking about the case. The judge has 90 days to make that decision. Wow, uh, definitely a uh, a sad situation there. So this this child dying in 1998, and all these years later, this is this is still around. This is still around. It is not settled what happened. Judge has 90 days to uh, make a ruling on that. Looking for food that feeds your soul? Hoodfellas Bistro and Catering is your local African-American-owned restaurant offering American cuisine. Located across from the courthouse, we offer daily jury specials to reward civic duty. Enjoy our full-service restaurant and fully stocked bar. Dine in, pick up, delivery, and catering. Our themed happy hours feature live music, handcrafted drinks, and weekly specials. Book your private event at hoodfellowsbistrocatering.com. Thank you for tuning in to On Fire TV. We are a 24-hour independent news and entertainment channel. We produce original movies, documentaries, reality-based shows, and podcasts. On Fire TV is made possible because of viewer and listener support. Go to onfire-tv.com to become an On Fire Plus member. Your dollars and your support have kept us going, and we are just getting started. So we've been talking about it, and you're going to hear me mentioning this more and more because we are going to be streaming from this event. Uh, But not only that, this is an indoor-outdoor pre-Memorial Day Adidas party. So break out those shoes, break out the outfits. 
It goes down at the Patapsco Arena Sunday, May the 28th from 8 p.m. to 2 a.m. Check this out. Two ballrooms, an outside tent. So this is outside, inside, indoor, outdoor. Check out this all-star DJ lineup. DJ Tons, DJ Kenny K, DJ Booby, DJ Scotty B, DJ One Love, DJ Gutta. Oh, I'm not finished yet. DJ Manny, DJ Kiwi, Mr. Incredible, DJ Double L, DJ Hot Toddy, all hosted by April Watts, Ryan DeLion, Big Status. There's free limited food, cash bar. Tickets are only $30. Tables are $300. And you can get those tickets right now. Now, check this out. You've got to have a ticket to get in this event. Let me say that again. This is a ticket only event. So you got to get those tickets. DTLR, MNK Music Warehouse, Security Mall, Silver Star Restaurant, 801 Bonaparte, uh, their cash app at Terry T Productions, Zell 443-953-1966, Terry T Productions, 443-953-1966. This is a ticket only event, no ticket, no entry, no exceptions. The indoor outdoor pre Memorial Day Adidas party at Patapsco Arena Sunday, May the 28th from 8 p.m. to 2 a.m. Now, check this out. This is for grown folks. I understand some of the, some of, some of our young listeners and some of our uh, you know young viewers. This is not the party for you. This is a grown folks party brought to you by Terry T and Sean Marshall. The pre Memorial Day Adidas party. We're going to be streaming live from this event. Streaming live at onfire tv.com. It's going to be a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to it. Get those tickets right now. Welcome back. Welcome back. You man, Diamond K in here, of course. The Diamond K show on fire tv.com. On fire tv.com. The Archdiocese of Baltimore is pushing back on reports that claim abusive priests are still working. The uh, letter was sent Friday to members of the Archdiocese. Uh, Archbishop William Lorry pushed back against recent reports that priests named in the report on clergy child sex abuse are still working in the archdiocese. Lorry wrote in part, some members of the clergy whose names have been tied more recently to media coverage focusing on the cover-up are, in fact, some of the very people who helped force a culture change that rooted out evil and shut out attempts to conceal the fail failures or hide abusers. How is it a cover-up if you report everything to law enforcement? Sad. Survivors of clergy abuse have called on Lori to step down, as he should. Earlier this week, they asked the Archdiocese to release the names of the abusers who are redacted in the Attorney General's report. The Maryland Attorney General's office spent years on this investigation, and the resulting report paints a damning picture of the Archdiocese, which is the oldest Catholic you know, organization in the country and spans much of Maryland. The report found that more than 150 Catholic priests and other Maryland clergy sexually abused more than 600 children, and they have escaped accountability. Let me say that again. This report found that more than 150 Catholic priests and other Maryland clergy sexually abused more than 600 children perpetually escaped accountability. That's why it's called a cover-up. The, uh, the damage, the damage, so deep, so deep. 
the Archbishop's uh, letter. Uh, I'm just going to read part of this mess. It says, Dear friends in Christ, the report by the Maryland Office of Attorney General that documents the tremendous harm caused to innocent children and young people by some ministers of the church is horrific. Deeply sad and incredibly painful reminder of the past failures of the archdiocese. Oh, you see what he's trying to do there. Now, skip down a little bit. The opposite of cover-up is accountability and transparency. If the names are redacted, how is that being transparent? If you don't name the people, how are they being held accountable? We continue. The archdiocese significantly enhanced its accountability to the faithful and to the public at large in the beginning of 1993 by consistently reporting all allegations of child sex abuse to law enforcement, even when the victim slash survivor making the allegations were already an adult. The archdiocese has further demonstrated transparency by publishing a list of priests and brothers accused of child sexual abuse on our website, a measure which is undertaken by virtually no other institution outside of the Catholic Church. The archdiocese actions and decisions regarding each allegation of child sex abuse have been scrutinized by an independent review board for 30 years to ensure absolute accountability and avoid any possible cover-up. And so I want to state unequivocally, no one who has been credibly accused, see the word there, credibly accused, what determines if this accusation is credible. Let's continue. Credibly accused of child abuse is in ministry today or employed by the archdiocese. Uh, And and so it goes on. Um, Let me read this last sentence. The last sentence says that before I conclude this letter, I ask for you to join me in praying that this public accounting of historical failures will bring healing to victim survivors, peace to the faithful, and a reconciliation to the church. So, uh, yeah, that's that's what he's saying. You, you want to talk about not taking accountability. Um, so this continues between the the archdiocese and and the the families, the the archdiocese and um, victims, uh, but abuse victims are preparing to sue the Baltimore Archdiocese under some of the new laws. And um, the statute of limitations has recently been eliminated for child sex abuse lawsuits amid heightened scrutiny of the Archdiocese of Baltimore. Attorney Ben Crump announced plans on Tuesday to bring a series of civil claims on behalf of victims. The threat of litigation comes as the Archdiocese faces this continued fallout from this report that was released last month that found more than 150 priests and other clergy sexually abused over 600 children with impunity. Meaning nothing happened to them. Children. So this report was produced, as I said, after this years-long investigation, and it paints a damning picture of the nation's oldest Catholic organization. So days after the report's release, Governor Westmore signed legislation to end Maryland's stature of limitations for child sex abuse lawsuits effective October 1. Previously, victims couldn't sue after turning 38. So uh, you can definitely not outrun the trauma that was inflicted, no matter how hard you try. Many of them, for years, for decades, believed that it was their fault, Attorney Crump said. 
Yeah, this is uh this is not over. There's there's going to be a lot of um a, a lot more here. There are, there are plenty of victims. There are plenty of families that were affected and you're going to continue to see uh the archdiocese respond in in I guess the way that the, the best way that he can. Uh, and and many feel that he is not being honest. Uh, it's definitely another way that this could be handled. Definitely another way this could be handled. But no, we're we're gonna see. We're we're, we're going to see what happens. But um, no matter how you look at it, this is a very 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 sad story. Welcome back. Welcome back. Your man, Dom K in here. Of course, the Dom K show on fire-tv.com. Jamie Foxx, there's, there have been so many conflicting reports about the entertainer, Jamie Foxx. You've seen all type of things online. You have seen people say, you know, recently that he was on life support. Family preparing for the worst. Jamie Foxx's daughter has hit back at reports. She says that Jamie Foxx has been out of the hospital for weeks. His daughter, Corinne, Corinne Foxx, saying these reports that the family is preparing for the worst when it comes to Jamie's health after his recent hospitalization, she took to Instagram stories to address a headline that read Jamie Fox loved ones reportedly preparing for the worst on fire TV has not posted any of those type of stories. Big outlets with large followings have posted these which is why Corinne addressed some of these headlines. She delivered a message that read update from the family. Sad to see how the media runs wild. My dad has been out of the hospital for weeks recuperating. In fact, he was playing pickleball yesterday. Thanks for everyone's prayers and supports support. We have an exciting work announcement coming next week, too. So that is good news. And this comes after Corinne's initial message on April the 12th, where she revealed that Jamie suffered a medical complication. Jamie later took to his Instagram to deliver a message that read, appreciate all the love, feeling blessed. So a lot of reports, a lot of conflicting reports. We've been seeing fans and friends post images of Jamie Foxx. And um, that is good. I mean, you know, you definitely, you definitely want him to be doing better. We don't, we don't want the bad news. So uh, this is very welcome news uh, from the family of Jamie Foxx.
back. Welcome back. You and Dominic in here. Before we get out of here, Daniel Penny has been charged for the choking of the Michael Jackson impersonator that uh, happened on the subway. Jordan Neely reports surfaced, noting that Penny was charged in this death. Penny is the U.S. Marine veteran who's seen on the video choking Neely while on the New York City MTA subway. Uh, And so reports are that he was choking uh, Neely for 15 minutes. We got about three minutes in the video. Uh, The Manhattan District Attorney Alvin Bragg delivered the update, noting that he is moving forward with charges against Penny who was a 24-year-old, was arrested for second-degree manslaughter and appeared in court but did not enter a plea. The former U.S. Marine turned himself in uh, to the NYPD on Friday and was released. Attorneys for this 24-year-old previously issued a statement saying that we fully expect that Danny will be exonerated on all charges. Yeah, this is... uh, this is, I mean, this case is so crazy. The fact that some Americans feel that you can just literally just grab somebody up and just choke them out because you say that they are a threat. The fact that folks sat by, I don't care the race, sat by and watched a civilian choke out another civilian on the subway, just on the subway. Disgusting. Disgusting. But that's what it is. This occurrence unfolded on the subway, northbound F train. They said that Jordan issued threats aimed towards fellow riders. He then reportedly screamed, I want food. I'm not taking no for an answer. I'm ready to go back to jail and I'll hurt anyone on this train. Moments later, Jordan reportedly threw garbage at other riders on the train, which caused a U.S. Marine to approach him from behind. Their confrontation turned into a physical altercation, resulting in the Marine placing Jordan in a chokehold as the F train neared the Broadway Lafayette station. Jordan lost consciousness after the Marine um, and a few other bystanders subdued him. Jordan remained in the chokehold for 15 minutes until first responders arrived. So if you're trying to protect people, once he had been subdued, and that was well before 15 minutes, common sense, human decency says release the hold. Says release the hold, but that's not what happened. So we're going to continue to follow this story. We're going to continue to update you Uh, The video of this aforementioned tragedy is floating around online. It's very sensitive. Um, I'm not showing it, uh, but, um, you know, it's out there if you want to see it. And uh, I was talking with my father about this case earlier. And uh, just because he's been charged doesn't mean he's going to be convicted or or of anything or go to jail or, or anything like that. Uh, so we're going to see how this unfolds, and and there's going to be a lot here. This is going to be a tough one. This is going to be a tough case, tough for the city of New York, tough for uh, the country. Of course, I'll be back here on Monday, 6 p.m., your man Diamond K on fire-tv.com. See you guys next week.